fixture, so I'm going to unbox it. And um, I'm going to be doing a collab in my kitchen area, so I'm going to be doing a few things in that area to get it ready for the collab. I'm going to go ahead and unbox this uh, light fixture. I originally was looking or about to place an order for my main dining room area, but while I guess looking at this light fixture, I looked at the price of the one I really wanted as well as the price of this one. And I kind of changed my mind. Well, I still went with the light fixture that I wanted. I just went with the smaller one. I'm going to put it in here. I am going to unbox it. My husband is going to help me with my collab, more or less. So probably put this light fixture up. I feel like it's too small for my main dining room area and it'll probably be a great size for this area. It may even be a little bit smaller than this one, but it is a statement piece. And I'm also going to remove that, that uh, lamp that we have back there because I feel like this light fixture will be competing with that lamp. So, so let's go ahead and unbox it. We'll unbox it together. So I don't know how it's going to uh, look inside the box. There's a little red string that hangs out that says hardware enclosed. So. I don't know if it's put together or we have to put it together. Looks like we are definitely, we are going to, and I knew we were going to have to put it together. I don't know why I'm so surprised, but here are the little books. Let me show you. So I don't know if I should wait on my husband to help. <laughs> But I think it's a lot of books. Oh my gosh, let's see what's underneath. Yeah, that's, these are all books, I guess. I don't know. It did say in the description that they're packing extra books just in case some come damaged. Or if you happen to drop them. But here they are. Here is one of the sets. So I'm assuming, I'll take out the instructions. They kind of hang and pack together. Really, really pretty. Put that back in the bubble wrap. They come out better just breaking the box all the way down. Can I get it out by myself? No. I'll probably break the box down all the way. And I'll make it look good now. So this is some hardware, let's see. Part of the lamp, part that says something. Filling. This is the attachment. So this is all the hardware. This is the chain, and here is what the light fixture pretty much hangs from. And of course, we can make it long or short. So that, ooh, that is that. Now, so I'm assuming all of this is books. Let me show you how big this box is. So all of this. And this is really what's going to have, hold the light together, okay? So yeah, that's it. So we gotta put it together. I don't know, let me see if I can find some instructions. Any instructions, any instructions? And maybe in here, let's see if the instructions are in here. So, I want to insert 
solid parts. Yeah. But anyway, my light fixture is here. <laughs> All right, you guys, I decided to go ahead and remove the light fixture and install my new chandelier on my own. Anytime I do any type of electrical work, I'm going to turn the power off to the area or sometimes I just flip the switch, but it is highly recommended that you turn your power off. So in this case, I went ahead and start removing it. My husband was working in the yard and I did not feel like waiting or I felt like waiting. I just didn't want to wait. I want my new light fixture up. So I did ask him a couple of questions because I don't, I don't hang a light fixtures or chandeliers enough to remember, but Anytime I'm dealing with electrical uh, light fixtures, things like that, I always refer to him. So he did answer my question. He really said, you can just wait. I'll be in there in a minute. But I went ahead and jumped right in. He ended up helping me with our um, backsplash. I'm going to be working on that in this video as well because I, like I mentioned earlier, I am doing a collab and that video will be out soon. So I just wanted to go ahead and get my new light fixture up. And anytime I'm dealing with electrical, I am going to use what they call those beer nuts and just cap off those electrical um, wires because I don't want to have any issues regardless. I'm just going to do those types of things for my protection. And it makes it easier too to just kind of push the wires where you need them to be. And it was a really easy light fixture to hang because it's just one cord. I adjusted the main unit of the chandelier by adding one long stem pole as well as about 10 inches of chain to this light fixture. I want it to fall right under the windowsill or I would say right above where the window ends. before I completely hang the chandelier, one thing I'm going to do is make sure that the light comes on after the initial install. And here you see it came right on. So I'm going to go ahead and close everything up and attach the rest of the pieces as well as the bubbles to the light fixture.
So I originally started unwrapping these glass globes or bubbles, if that's what you want to call them, as I was hanging them. And I realized it's a little tedious. So let's have a seat and do one tray at a time because you have to take them out the bubble wrap, take them out the plastic wrap, which is attached and separated by rubber bands to stop them from breaking. So I did that and the process was a lot quicker and smoother. So throughout this whole box, I only had three sections or three bags of bulbs that actually were um, broke. So I was able to piece a couple of them to each other just to have some extra ones on hand for the future. And finally, this is the last one that I need to add. Now, I originally thought about putting this um, chandelier in my bathroom, like right above my tub. I feel like it would be perfect for that. I mean, the bubbles and the ambiance from the lighting is real light. So it kind of puts off a romantic vibe. So we'll see. We may add it later when I move into uh, remodeling our bathrooms. All right, so let's move into the kitchen area. We're going to go ahead and remove this micro hood. I'm doing a collab with a company and I wanna focus on their product in that video. So these are the things that we do sometimes behind the scene to get ready for specific product information. So in this case, I need to remove the micro hood I need to paint the brown part of the cabinet and then I'm going to be installing about three rows of backsplash or three rows of tile to the backsplash. So I'm going ahead and doing my first layer of painting and then my husband is going to help me cut the tile. It's, it's very minimum cutting but 
that helped me speed up the process i would measure and he would do the cutting real easy this is actually my first time installing towel and now i feel very com comfortable with doing it when my towel guy installed this towel i had him go up one level Normally they will stop right where the microwave would be, but I had him go ahead and go up one level and I had the, the towel and all of the product left from the last time he did it, which was actually a year ago. So I was like, let's do it ourselves. There's no need in calling him over just to do three rows when I don't mind tackling this project, project ourselves. So I went ahead and uh, did it and you'll see in a minute how it turned out. So I'm using a notched trowel to apply the adhesive. I don't even know where we got it from. I just know it was in the garage and the notches in the trowel makes it where that adhesive will really suck that towel to the glue. All right, so we do have the towel adhesive on the wall. My husband has made the first cut. So we're going to alternate the pieces just like the towel install guy did. So we started off with the short piece and we went long and then we'll do the opposite on the next row just so it'll all look like it was done at the same time so the the hardest thing i think for my husband when it came to doing the cuts were doing uh the really small cuts the really small pieces but he managed to get it done and we had enough tile to complete the project and then you'll see later i'm going to apply the mortar Oh, y'all i did not have a rubber grout float so i just started using a plastic putty knife and it worked in the beginning and then i switched up and started using my hands and it worked out even better but i had everything else that was the one thing i did not have and i mixed the grout three to one so this was a lot. I used one and a half cups of powder, the grout powder, to a half a cup of water. And the consistency was perfect. I read the directions on uh, the back of the package and it turned out great. The color was perfect, spot on. Oh, and before I forget, the color of the grout is called Biscuit. It looks dark, but it's going to dry the right color. As you can see, it turned out perfect. I'm absolutely happy. All right, you all, that is the end of this video. I know it's a lot different from what I usually share on my channel, 
I like to share the finished look, but you'll have to wait to the next video to see what I'm doing. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.